I'm now talking with Roberta Drago, who has created a an, very interesting brand, and we're going to find out why. Roberta's been in the industry not quite as long as me, but a long time, and he's done many facets, which makes him really aware of the industry, about the customer, what they're looking for, something different, something exciting, something maybe that was meeting, which was missing. And he's created Laboratorio Olfativo, and I'm going to ask you, Roberto, why, with all that experience, did you decide to create a brand? Well, uh, thanks for the interview. Okay, to let me explain uh, what's behind Laboratorio Fativo that is important. Uh, we are born in 2001 as distributors in the niche market, perfumery. And still now, in the market, now we are distributors okay, of many brands in the Italian market. But then we had the passion to give a reality to an idea that we had, okay, to create our own brand. Uh, and uh, but who can help us to, to produce it? It was not easy, considering in 2005, 6, uh, 2008, it was not so easy to find the information in the web. It's not as today. I so know. It was not so easy and, uh, to find the who can help us to do is this? And then the idea was to create a brand where we could uh, uh, do something uh, uh, coherent. That is the most important thing for me. The, a brand must be coherent. And to be an affordable price with creativity inside and with quality yes. inside. Three aspects that are very important for me for the niche perfumes. Fourth aspect is to give total freedom the noses okay so not with a marketing brief I tell to them a story okay one my vision one my idea it can be a picture can be a name can be a trip that I've done and uh, to talk about this uh, is not so easy because uh, it, it, it's really complicated to create a connection yes because yes. we are talking about nothing an emotion okay? yeah. it's not, nothing of material that I can show okay? And sometimes it's difficult to create the link. But uh, in 2008, finally, we find the right people and we have started with uh, three noses that uh, helped us. And uh, we are launching the brand in 2009 okay. Okay, with four fragrances. The packaging was not this one. It's not so nice, but yeah, we but, started. But, but things have to evolve. Things have, you learn as you go. Because you, you have so many ideas when you start out. But the market also dictates where, where you go to. And I think it's very interesting for me when I discovered you, just to understand how effective your brand has been in the UK. When we are launched in the UK, yeah. you mean? Mm. Well, in the UK, we have started with Liberty. Yes. Uh, years ago, direct. They come to a fair, to a show, and they fall in love with the brand. And I was astonished because they bought the brand and they gave us a window in Carnaby Street. I said, wow, wow, what's happening here? They love the brand, it's great. And uh, we've continued with them. But then we have understood it was difficult to manage such an important client uh, from so far. And so we have decided uh, before I don't remember before COVID yeah, to start with the distributor. Yeah. Okay, with Phoenix. But when the when the customer is looking for Alti, I'm uh, Olfactivo, Laboratorio Olfactivo. Yes. My Italian's not very good. Yeah, don't worry. Uh, what are they My going industry. to find? Why is your brand different from other brands? Because I think I know. I think that people love something in all our perfumes. There is a twist. Uh, different. Uh, so three, yes, yes. There is something. Also, in the, with the basic perfume, I don't know. I take the example also, always of Milo. Milo is the white lily, okay? And uh, I love the white lily, but to me, to me, it's boring, okay? Because it's too perfect. Okay? Like most women, too perfect. Too perfect. <laughs> not, not like most men? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> so, I said, okay, I like it. But uh, in order to, to let the people fall in love with, with this perfume, we have to create a twist, something different. And with Luca Maffei, the nose behind, we have decided to put pepper on top. So we have the comfort, uh, comfortable uh, smell of the white lily, 
but there is a touch of uh, two kind of pepper on top to, to say, oh, what is this mix? So it's, it's something different. Or with the lotus, with the pier. Yes. Okay? Create some accords that can uh, surprise the client, the consumer, it can create loyalty. Because this, the most important thing is to create loyalty to the brand. So this is the first, uh, basically the vision technically. The second one is always to create something coherent. I have to respect the consumer. Because when a consumer approach a brand as laboratory or other brands, they are going out from their comfort zone, the other brand. Mm -hmm. You take, uh, I don't know, Hermes, you take the fragrance, but you take Hermes. So when, you go out from, when you go out from this comfort zone and you try, you test a niche brand, I have to respect it to offer something different. Yes. yes. Otherwise, I am the copy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely what right. What is in the mainstream market. So we have always tried to be different. Uh, we try something to put, some, uh, always to put something to surprise the consumer. Um, I would say for me when I discovered your brand I looked at it and, I, and you actually epitomise what niche is for me it's actually experience of the industry and taking it a little step further So, and there's always something extra and as you say there's a twist but there's also always something quite addictive in many of your perfumes and, and I know that from myself because you rose and the different things that I've tried that I wear a lot and it is that extra thing quite intangible in a way but for me you've made a brilliant niche brand and it's, it's a very good example to me of what niche fragrances is so I thank you I really thank you because it's my mission